Well, welcome everyone to beautiful Giant City State Park. Um, I want to thank the staff, Chris, Jen, and Jill, for hosting us here today. Um, our staff across DNR do amazing work, and um, I, I can't I can't say it enough how much I appreciate them and, and the hard work, hard work that they do every day. So thank you all for having us here today. And today we're exactly one month out from the spectacular April 8th total solar eclipse that will pass over southern Illinois. This rare celestial event is expected to bring thousands of visitors to our great state to view the eclipse. Another total solar eclipse won't be visible in the lower 48 states until August of 2044. So this eclipse presents a special opportunity for many. And I'm fast forward to thinking how old I'm going to be. Time's clicking away. <laughs> so... Um, and, and I'll just insert really quickly a personal note here that the, the eclipse in 2017, I was so blessed to be with my family on our farm over in Hardin County, just the five of us. And I will never forget that moment, that just under two minutes that we had of totality. Um, for me as a spiritual person, it truly was a spiritual moment. Um, goosebumps. I, I had tears. My kids made, they're like, Mom, are you crying? Yes, I am, because it was so moving. So I can't stress enough, if you didn't get to experience it, what, what an event it is. Um, and represented in this room are employees from across state government who have been working together and planning for this event for well over a year. This includes staff from Illinois Department of Transportation, the Illinois Office of Tourism, Illinois State Police, Illinois Emergency Management Agency, and the Illinois Department of Public Health. Um, in fact, many of these folks have been, never stopped planning even after the 2017 uh, total solar eclipse. We're grateful for your efforts to help people have a safe and enjoyable day. At IDNR, our staff are excited to welcome guests to our beautiful state parks. They've been working so hard to make sure campgrounds are ready, signage is posted, there's plenty of garbage cans and portable toilets, um, that people know where to safely park and, and to be able to view the eclipse. Our conservation police officers are prepared to handle all types of possible emergencies on land and water and will be ready to assist other police agencies as needed across the region. State parks are ready to welcome the multitudes of campers. Who have, many have already reserved campsites in our parks and, and several others we expect to be making throughout this month. We expect April 8th to be busy and exciting for all, but the collective goal for everyone here today is to ensure residents and visitors have a safe and successful viewing experience here in Southern Illinois. My hope is that visitors will plan to stay an extra day or two, not only view the eclipse, but explore all our beautiful state parks, historic sites, wineries, museums, restaurants, and other attractions Southern Illinois has to offer. And I right now wanna bring up uh, State Senator Dale Fowler to make a few comments. Thank you, Director, and, and good morning from Southern Illinois, the heartland of America, right here. When I first became a state senator and really traveling around uh, the district more in depth than I had just as a citizen, and visiting some of the state parks I really wasn't all that familiar with, and we created an initiative called Southern Illinois Treasures, which you can find on my website or Facebook page. And I have over 20, in my 59th district, the 14 Southern Illinois counties that I have, we have 20-some state parks right here in beautiful Southern Illinois. And then on, on top of that, the amazing Shawnee National Forest as well. So we started an initiative to showcase with videography and photos and voiceovers and, sh and sending these videos all over the country. And to have people to be able to come down to Southern Illinois and say, Senator, we can't believe how beautiful Southern Illinois is. And to echo Director Phelps Finney's remarks about 2017 eclipse, that was an, an event uh, I will never forget either. I had the opportunity to be at Walker's Bluff for the Ozzy Osbourne concert. It was amazing. It was uh, <laughs> bark at the moon with the eclipse going on. How much better does it get, right? And to know that this one's going to last twice as long. And to, be, and to be there and to see this once almost, almost well, it's going to be twice in a lifetime maybe, opportunity to, to see this and to, for these citizens to be able to come to Southern Illinois. And also, when, they're, when you're here, go to some other areas, visit our state parks, go on the IDNR website and see all the state parks we have. It's truly phenomenal. We are so blessed to live in some of the most gorgeous country right here in Southern Illinois. So I, again, we, we, we pray for everyone's safety on April the 8th. It's going to last twice as long as the as this 2017 eclipse, and I can't wait to see uh, see the results of all the the development and the opportunity we have right here in Southern Illinois and and forthcoming. Thank you so very much, and I'll send it back over to Representative Phelps Finney. 
Thank you, Senator. And now I'm going to bring up Representative Paul Jacobs for some comments. Well, I am Dr. Paul Jacobs, the uh, state rep of the 118th district. If you look around this building right now, we're just about in the center of the district. It's an absolutely gorgeous thing to have here with us. Last time around, I was at Von Jacob Vineyard, which I used to own, and there were hundreds of us there. It was an extremely exciting time to see that. I just couldn't imagine what our ancestors saw when they would see these things over hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years, they had to be scared to death. But I tell you what, we were just as much in awe sitting on that, that, that porch at, at the winery. Unfortunately, I've sold the winery, so I'm going to be watching from the old winery space at my house. And there's a few people that are going to be coming by. I think that we're going to be just as much in awe then, this time around, as we were last time. And you know, it was over two minutes last time. It's over four minutes. I think we're close to four and a half minutes at, at the house. So this area is loaded with beauty. Just look at Giant City Park. Look at all the other parks, Shawnee Forest, all of the things that we have. Come down here. Enjoy it. Uh, let us all be gracious hosts for everybody that comes, and let our guests be gracious also. Just enjoy the solar eclipse. I'm, I, I'm so excited about it again. I was excited last time. I think I'm more excited this time because I saw it last time. Thank you very much, and just enjoy the solar. Yeah, thank you, and I want to thank Senator Fowler and Representative Jacobs for all the support that they give to the department and especially all of our parks, so thank you both. It's now my pleasure to introduce Bob Baer, co-chair of the Southern Illinois Eclipse 2017-2024 Steering Committee and a specialist at the SIU School of Physics and Applied Physics. SIU has some ex outstanding activities planned for the Eclipse Weekend, and Bob is going to tell us more about that. Bob. We have a lot going on. There's over 10 different individual activities going on over four days on campus. There's activities in Carbondale, and most of those are free. So I really encourage people to come down, to enjoy it, to take in what this area has to offer and just uh, sharing those great experiences with us. Now, I mentioned you know, being able to work on this. It's, uh, the eclipse is happening, whether we want it or not, right? <laughs> but to take advantage of it and do all these exciting things, it has been a lot of work. And that started in 2014 for me, working with teams and some great people from the American Astronomical Society and NASA. And so the next person I'd like to introduce bring up here is Blair Allen. He's the executive producer of NASA Edge, and we've been working together for nine years, I believe, <laughs> in preparation for 2017 Eclipse, what's coming up, and beyond that as well. Blair? Thanks, Bob. Yeah, I'm Blair Allen of NASA Edge, and we produce a podcast for NASA, and uh, we're very excited about the 2024 Eclipse. As Bob said, we covered the 2017 eclipse with a megacast from Saluki Stadium. But NASA is going to provide full coverage on NASA TV and all its platforms of the 2024 eclipse. And we are going to provide uh, telescope feeds from Saluki Stadium, again, to them and the rest of the world. This is a huge privilege. It's very interesting and very exciting to partner with SIU because they've been key in helping us learn how to capture these images effectively. And we've worked with amateur astronomers to get good uh, uh, images of the sun in different spectrum, different frequencies, and we like to share them with the world. So we're very excited about this. We're happy to share it with you, but we're more excited about working with our good partners at SIU. We'll be working with them beyond the eclipse for the big heliophysics year. It's an exciting partnership. It's exciting to think about all of the things that we can learn from the sun right here in Illinois. So next after me is Daniel Thomas, who's the, directory, uh, the direct, deputy director of tourism for Illinois. Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to be back here in southern Illinois and, quite frankly, uh, an absolutely awe-inspiring and stunning part of the state. Um, I was one of those 200,000 people in 2017 that was also in awe. Um, and collectively, when I look at the economic impact from a tourism perspective, between 15 and $18 million was generated in the region. Um, we are planning for an absolutely astronomical, pun intended, um, tourism experience in the region. 
I'm happy to report that hotel rooms are still available. And the great thing about that is we've had new product added to the region. For example, the Walker's Bluff Hotel and Casino. Over 100 rooms, it's opened. As we look at the inventory report with our local convention and visitor bureau and Carol Hoffman here, I'm pleased to say that we can safely move and expand so that everyone benefits from the tourism impact in the region. We are encouraging everyone to please pre-plan. This is not something that you decide on the day of. And as someone who drove in and out of the region last time, why not change of pace and stay longer and come in earlier uh, and experience everything that Southern Illinois has to offer? For example, over 31 of our Illinois state parks will actually have line of sight to totality. So think about National Forest, the Crab Orchard Refuge, Cache River Wetlands, or right here in Giant City State Park. There are numerous family activities for you to do in the region, whether it's um, zip lining, imagine being on a canoe, seeing totality, um, whether it's getting in and visiting one of our Illinois-made makers, small business in the area. There are so many free events, but there are also so much, uh, so many offerings in terms of events and festivals. So there are a number of ways that you can experience the Southern Illinois University Crossroads Eclipse Festival, of course, will return. The Shawnee Cave Total Solar Eclipse Festival, where you can experience live artists and food and drink and vendors, all right here uh, next to the beautiful uh, Shawnee National Forest. Or maybe get alongside some alpacas and uh, rolling Oak Alpaca Ranch with their event called Alpaca Lips. <laughs> I'm full of puns today, clearly. Um, <laughs> all alongside the Shawnee National Forest. But on a serious note, we look forward to welcoming uh, many more visitors to the region, uh, but we look forward to also helping pre-plan on enjoyillinois.com and, of course, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources from a resource planning perspective. So extend your stay, come and experience, stay longer. We look forward to welcome you to Illinois. I now uh, would like to introduce Skip Klinger, the Executive Director of World Shooting and Recreational Complex here in Sparta. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for everyone being here. Uh, as uh, you had heard, I'm the Executive Director of the World Shooting Complex. Uh, there's a lot of state parks here, and there's plenty of uh, what we call uh, full-service campsites that are still available. So if anybody's looking for a campsite, give us a call or go on to the website, uh, the IDNR website to the campsite website. It's only $25 a night. So come on in Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, stay till Monday, and we will have a good, uh, good time. Uh, WSCR is the home of the Grand American, which is the largest trap shoot in the world. Come a look at our facility. We'll be glad to show you around. We have 120 traps. The trap line is three and a half miles long two sporting clays courses and that stuff will all be will everything will be open that weekend and probably into monday so anybody that wishes to come and and uh shoot uh we will have the facility available thank you and uh next is uh robert graf Grace. great sorry uh your chief of operations I was kind of chuckling back there while I was waiting my turn because, no offense, Skip, but um, I wasn't. Daniel drew the short straw of having to go after the NASA guys, so <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad they, they got that out of the way before I had to get up here. So, um, uh, good morning. As Skip said, my name is Rob Grafe. I'm the current bureau chief for operations for IDOT District 9 here in Carbondale. Um, we have some other teammates here with us. Uh, Ms. Dawn Johnson is with our uh, comms team, and Mr. Kirk Brown is our regional engineer, so we'll be available throughout the day for any additional questions that aren't, uh, that aren't covered in this speech. But to give you a little bit of an idea um, of, of what District 9 compromises, we have the southern 16 counties. So as the crow flies, it's basically 64 over to Mount Vernon, cuts just a little bit south of Chester. So if if, for those of you that are familiar with the area of Fort Myers, I have family that lives in that area down there. So 
the total district mileage that we have to cover in this district is 3,651 miles. So to put that into perspective, you can leave this, you can leave right here at Giant City, you can drive to Fort Myers, back to Carbondale, back to Fort Myers, back to Chattanooga, Tennessee. That is the amount of mileage. So the eclipse is an awesome thing for this area. I echo the sentiments that are expressed by um, the speakers here today, but IDOT is here as, as, as an assist unit for that because it does complicate our effort than a normal um, Monday, so to speak. The, the lessons that we learned um, from the last event in 2017 is that traffic volumes um, and area congestion were slightly lower prior to the event. Our areas of concern were immediately following the event. Um, they were quite the challenge once the event uh, reached its completion. Um, some unofficial interviews with some of the um, local residents, we, there was a hesitancy for local residents to get out and enjoy the activities that were put on by, say, City of Carbondale and the local municipalities, right? Well, that hesitancy, you know, everybody stayed in until the event. We encouraged the actual residents of Southern Illinois to get out and experience what we have to offer here. You know, show us off a little bit because Senator Fowler touched on it. This is a beautiful area and there's a lot to do. We, we are underappreciated, I think, in, in most parts of, of, of the world, to be honest with you. Um, IDOT activities, I'll touch on that really quick. Um, we will be working in concert with the Illinois State Police, the local uh, law enforcement agencies. So to be truthful, our day-to-day -day operations from that Monday to the next Monday are really the same because we work in concert with the men and women with ISP. They go through our comm center. We will distribute our forces when we are needed. Okay, We are working on some... Um, deploying some portable message boards, but again, we're not an enforcement agency. We're going to try to encourage people not to park on, say, Route 13 or 57 shoulders during the event because that's never good when you're that close to live traffic. Our uh, construction uh, people, what we've done is it's similar to what we call a red holiday down here. So we have inserted special provisions into our plans and we're working actively with our construction, uh, both our contractors and our IDOT personnel that any unnecessary lane closures will be taken down during that time. Okay, so some lane closures that we can't violate our drop-off policy or say, for instance, we have half of a bridge taken out with a concrete barrier in between it, we obviously can't reopen that. But we are making every effort um, under our capabilities to, to minimize the impacts to the traveling public. Um, rest area signage. Central Bureau of Operations is working with the districts to erect uh, some signs of, of no, essentially no camping in, in the rest areas. Now that does not apply to tractor trailers because obviously they have rest laws that they must abide. So we're working with that. We will issue press releases coming up to the event. There will be multiples both through our district office, our comms team through central office. We work hand in hand with these people on the daily, so we're used to this. We will be very active on the, uh, both the social media site and through, the, through news agencies and so forth. Um, my suggestions is uh, the biggest thing that I can stress is patience. Um, that is a key. I, I always laugh and I use this example because we've had multiple meetings on this, is that if you've ever flown and there's a, surely a guy in row 28 that as soon as they hit the button and he thinks he's going to beat the person out of row one, you know, that's what we experienced last time. So we encourage the traveling public to come down ahead of time, enjoy it, stay a while, because that would be the key. If everyone would stay over and enjoy the area Monday night and leave Tuesday, you, you would never know, know the difference in traffic patterns. Um, no distracted driving. We, we have problems with that. Our statistics are proving true that um, a significant portion of our accidents are with distracted driving. So the cell phone usage should be an emergency only. I, I know this goes without saying, but uh, you know, I'm sure Illinois State Police will touch on this, but um, you know, drinking and driving is never a good thing. So um, we, we saw last, year, last time in this that while traffic was slow, it did progress until we had an accident. 
So that throws a wrinkle because depending on where the accident is, we can't even get to it because it's so crowded unless we have a shoulder to transverse as we're on our way. Um, have a full tank of gas. Uh, it's similar to a snow event. Full tank of gas. Have some water in the car. We're not obviously worried, and I hope I didn't just jinx myself, we're not worried about snow events during this. And so um, the weather, the, the temperature really shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I know I jinxed myself. So jumper cables, that type of thing. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but let's have patience because that is, that is the key. So um, we will be around later for questions, uh, the rest of us from IDOT. So uh, the next speaker I'm going to introduce is Mr. Mike McPeak. He's the Operations Divisions Chief for IEMA and Office of Homeland Security. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And I'd like to say a special thank you to IDNR and, and our host here at Giant City State Park. What a great facility uh, to be part of and at today. All right, well, uh, IEMA OHS, we appreciate the opportunity uh, to work with our partners in planning and uh, coordination as we prepare for April 8th uh, for this historic eclipse. And, you know, anytime there's a large-scale public, especially outdoor event, large gatherings, uh, we at IEM OHS work in support uh, and coordination and for planning and preparedness. And that's what we've done for this. Uh, once the, uh, over the last 12 months, we have worked very diligently in uh, supporting our partners in, uh, in planning and training and exercise uh, development to to really prepare for what we're going to see on April 8th, m much of which lessons learned from uh, the 2017 event. And so if there was to be uh, an emergency incident, uh, we stand ready to support uh, our partner agencies represented here today our, and at the local uh, and county levels, an emergency crisis at the individual level, and, and we'll get through this uh, safely. And that's the most important thing, and that's what we're here to support and ensure. And so we encourage everyone to come and visit and to have a great event. Come early, stay late, enjoy this great area. And uh, to tell you more about how the state's preparing on the public health front, I'd like to introduce Bobby Elsey, the Division Chief of Disaster Planning and Readiness for the Illinois Department of Public Health. Bobby. Thank you, Mike. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bobby Elsey. As Mike said, I am the Division Chief for Disaster Planning and Readiness with the Illinois Department of Public Health Office of Preparedness and Response. It's a mouthful. We at the agency have been thrilled to work with our local and state partners to ensure that the experience of witnessing a total solar eclipse is not only enjoyable, but is actually safe for everyone. One of our primary goals at the agency has been eye safety. While watching an eclipse can be awe-inspiring, it can also pose risk if the proper safety precautions are not taken. Many of you listening have heard this many, many times before, but I have to be a broken record on this. Please do not stare directly at the eclipse unless you are wearing legitimate protective eyewear. And no, your sunglasses, normal sunglasses, will not cut it. They do not protect your eyes from the solar radiation that can actually cause damage. To safeguard your eyes, you'll need special solar lenses or viewers that meet the International Organization Standardizations 123-12-2. Safety criteria. Again, that's one, two, three, one, two, dash three, and they need to be labeled as such. Unfortunately, there have been incidents of individuals and vendors selling counterfeit lenses and viewers that do not meet the safety standard. This is why preparing in advance is so crucial. Do your research. Make sure that wherever you're acquiring your lenses or safety glasses or whatever you're using is from a legitimate source or a reputable vendor and that actually meets this criteria. Now, planning is key to ensure safety during the eclipse event. With the surge of visitors expected in the area, potential traffic congestions or weather events forbidding could lead to extended travel or wait times. I recommend keeping a stash of food, water, and your essential medications in your vehicle in the event that you're stuck in traffic or experiencing longer than normal wait times during your travel. Additionally, it is crucial to plan for different contingencies, including on how to handle emergencies. To assist visitors to the state, we at Public Health are developing an online resource map that will display hospitals, urgent care facilities, and other medical providers in the region. This informational resource will be available later this month on IDPH's website. Moreover, Let's not forget that both flu and COVID-19 are active in Illinois. 
Before traveling or joining large crowds, please ensure you're up to date on all of your vaccinations. If you find yourself in a crowded space, don't hesitate to wear a mask if you've, for the added protection if you feel the need to do so. Ultimately, we want everyone to enjoy this unique experience safely. I want to extend a huge thanks to our local, state, and federal partners for their efforts in making this occasion both fun and memorable for everyone making the trek to visit Illinois and for our residents. Thank you. And I will introduce Director Finney. Okay. With that, we will open up to questions. Any questions? Maybe we've been so thorough. We've covered every possible question, which is good. Of course, we're, we'll be available um, afterwards for any one-on-one uh, -on -one questions. Um, I do want to also thank, of course, the Lodge for hosting us and the, the work they do here, the food. If you've not eaten the fried chicken dinner and the mashed potatoes, you're missing out. So um, it's, it's the best. So, so thank, thanks to the Lodge. Um, thank you all for being here today, the press, everyone, all the stakeholders, all the work you've put in. Um, and your additions today are so appreciated. So with that, we'll, we'll end today's time. Thank you so much.